I like Hutchinson the best, and I don't think Linda Brom is worth a top 10 pick. Thibodeau slipped, and I am going to grab Thibodeau. The Giants took clear Elam. Good for them. Kenyon Green is a guarantee in my mind. He would be such a dream pick right here. Um, Evan Neal is still on the board. <laughs> I'm not going to fit with that. That 44 pick could be tight end. That 44 pick could be a good linebacker, a good safety. We could drop back one pick and pick up a second rounder for New Orleans. We got options here. Hello, 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 and welcome to Jets Chaos, the fourth installment of the Mock Draft 2023. The one that might not mean as much because we don't even know if we're really going to have the picks. But let's not jump ahead. Right now, the Jets own the number 13 pick in the draft. We also owe, I think, uh, the 47th, I want to say. So, And we also own the 74th or something like that. These picks are ours, our, our picks. They belong to the Jets. They are definitely the Jets picks. So, you know, she half a dozen of this, half a dozen one another, six of the other. It, it, it really doesn't matter if, you know, to sit there and say, oh, well, we're not going to have the pick because we're going to trade it for this guy or that guy. Well, let me tell you something. We haven't traded anything yet. It's all pick. It's all pick. It's like if I was sitting here with two slices of pizza. And you told me, well, you're going to eat the pizza, so you're not going to have any slices. So you have zero slices. No, I have two slices. I haven't eaten them yet. Well, guess what? We have picks in the draft, and we haven't traded them yet. I see some people out there saying, oh, yeah, Rogers, we're going to get them for like a fifth-round pick this year and a third-round pick next year. <laughs> I don't think so, but one could hope. Anyway, um, I don't know if you saw the Aaron Rodgers news. Is you know he, he just uh, you know he, he got rid of the rumor that he was going to play for the 49ers when he said I ain't going to San Francisco. So that's done, and everybody's a genius. Everybody's a genius. Like Michael Fox, the genius. What Rodgers isn't happening? How do you know it's not happening? Like I understand. I, I'm not saying it is going to happen. But how could you? How do you know it's not? You know somebody. Like you, you got a contact. You have a connection, because the Jets brass is saying they're going to make a major play at a veteran quarterback. They're, they said it. Now I'm not saying that we're going to get Rodgers. I, I I really am not. I'm not. I'm not saying we're going to get Derek Carr. I'm not sitting there and claiming that we're going to get any particular quarterback. But I'm also not going to sit there and say, we're not getting Aaron Rodgers or we're not getting Derek Carr. Like, like right? I don't think we are getting Rodgers. I, I, mean, I have to teach people how to be like people. I mean, it's like you don't know. You're just some guy like me. Stop saying things like you know it. You don't know that it's not happening. Like, why, how do you know that? Do you know Joe Douglas? Are you friends with somebody that I don't know? I mean, it's just like, it, you don't know. <laughs> Stop acting like you know. It drives me crazy. Like, like what is it with this fan base? <laughs> it's like, everybody's arguing like they know. Just say, have opinions. I don't think we're going to get Rodgers. I think we're going to get Rodgers. I don't know. Maybe we'll get Rogers. My opinion, 80% we get Rogers. My opinion, 10% we get Rogers. Can't we just be, behave like that? I, the comments of my videos drive me crazy. Jeremy, you're smoking crack. There's no possible way, way we're getting Derek Carr. I'm smoking crack. Who's smoking crack? You know who's smoking crack? The person who sits there who could definitively decide and say whether or not we're going to get a player when they don't work for the New York Jets. Or that the other team, they have no affiliation with the NFL. But magically, they know. Look, the odds are, I agree. We're not going to get Aaron Rodgers. You know, why do I say that? Because for the first last three years, Roger Ro Aaron Rodgers says, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. And he doesn't leave. Right? So that's first off. Aaron Rodgers is most likely going to be a Green Bay Packer when the year starts. Right? Now, if he does get traded, there's going to be so many other teams that also want 
to get him also, right? So why would I think that the Derek, Derek, uh, Aaron Rodgers would come to the Jets? What, why would I think over other teams? Uh, so p- people will argue Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, but come on. Just because Nathaniel Hackett is his friend doesn't mean he's going to make a life decision like, I'm going to go live in New Jersey in the freezer. I mean, the guy had to deal with Green Bay for the, you know what I mean? When he can go to teams that are like warmer or nicer. Uh, here we go. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, by the power of Gray Skull, John Nolte now has the power. Um, well, please welcome our new moderator, John Salty Nolte. Um, oh, so Micro says it is an opinion. Okay. Well, it's not you I'm pointing out, Micro, because you've never said I'm smoking crack or like insulted me in comments of my videos. There are people who, because they have a different opinion, insult me. Like you're a delusional idiot. You're a moron. There's no way we're getting Derek Carr. And I'm like, what? What? Where is this coming from? And I didn't even say, like, because if anybody knows, if, if, if someone says, what does Jets chaos think is um, think is going to happen? If anybody knows me, everyone will shrug their shoulders and go, I really don't know. Do you know why you don't know? Because I've never shared what I think is going to happen. Because I don't know what's going to happen. So that's what's so weird about those comments. When people comment on my video and say, Yo, you're crazy. You think that we're going to get Derek Carr. It's like, well, you must be crazy because just because I talked about the possibility that Derek Carr is going to come to the New York Jets doesn't mean I said that I think that's going to what's going to happen. I'm just exploring all avenues. There's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of possibilities. There's quarterbacks that are going to be available. Our, our team is pursuing a veteran quarterback. So if we list the veteran quarterbacks, it's not delusional or crazy to have the conversation of, do we think the Jets are going to get them? Now, the reason I say I don't know is because I don't know. I don't know. They might be laughing on one Jets drive, like all well, these idiot fans think we're going for Rodgers. <laughs> or they might be sitting there like they might already have a deal worked out because they're all friends. LaFleur, there's connections, right? To LaFleur and the head coach and the Hackett and Rogers, there's tons of connections. On their cell phones, they might have a deal worked out, but that's tampering and maybe they're not allowed to be talking about it. I don't know. But they may even have a deal. They might be working a deal. They might have a tentative deal. We don't know. Or they may have already said, Rogers may have told them already, I'm not coming to the Jets. But we're not going to tell anybody. Right? Because... If, if other teams think that Rodgers might come to the Jets, maybe they'll offer more. So we don't know a thing. We really don't. Derek Carr may already know there's no way in the planet he's coming to New York. Right? But he's not going to say that because he wants the Washington Commanders or, I don't know who, a San Francisco 49ers or whatever to make the biggest offer possible. I don't know why everybody's so convinced that the San Francisco 49ers are going for a new quarterback when they have Brock Purdy and Trey Lance, but that's a whole nother story. It's a whole nother discussion for my other channel. But look, so getting back to the main point, and which I agree with Microfox to a, an extent, is, yeah, I agree. Geno Smith is a veteran. Gary Minshew's a veteran. There's a lot of veteran quarterbacks out there. So I think that's why I don't know. And, I, and I'm and i not making – that's why I don't feel confident about any one quarterback because when they say they're going to go out and get a veteran quarterback, I don't know. I don't know which one it's going to be, you know. Um, <laughs> he's Now he's stressing to show it's his opinion. <laughs> um, I think Derek, Derek Carr is a good op- – one of the reasons I like Derek Carr as an option is because um, – I don't. I think that the Raiders are going to have to release him, and therefore, art thou, um, it will not cost us any draft picks, and that's kind of appealing. And but at the same time, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is you know well at least he was for a long time elite. Where I, I don't know if I would define Derek Carr as elite. I would define Derek Carr as a very good, better than average guy, top ten for many years, over four thousand yards passing, all that good stuff. 
but not like to the eliteness of, you know, an Aaron, an Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that's like elite. But the problem is, is that you have to be really knowledgeable about or whatever you want to say is Aaron Rodgers, 39 years old, and he just had a really bad year. Like he was like, I go by DVOA because they're the most logical um, rating system, I think. They don't give the details, but they tell you things that they do. Like they rule out bullshit passes. When it's third and 15 and a quarterback dumps the ball off for a four-yard game, that doesn't count as good things for them. But also when a quarterback throws the ball to one of their receivers, hits them in the chest, and the ball bounces up in the air and gets caught because the receiver stinks and the it's an interception, that doesn't count against the quarterback. You see, so DVOA looks at situation. Like the thing they score high is when a, when it's third and 12 and a quarterback throws a 15-yard pass in the air for a completion, they give that a lot of points or, of course, touchdowns in the end zone. So it's a very smart system. Um, Derek Carr was, by the way, top 10 quarterback four out of the last five years in that system and only failed when he had this horrendous coach that proved he's a failure coach in Denver and now is getting the opportunity to fail in, in Las Vegas. Um, but uh, Rogers was like 17th and every number in his was down. He didn't look to the eye as good as, as I'd seen him in his career. Um, am I saying that means he's done? No, no, no way. Because you know, there was a, there was a, there was a time where green Bay thought Rogers was done and they drafted Jordan love. And then Rogers came out and had an MVP season. So, you know, he didn't have the best receivers. He just lost Devontae Adams. I mean, he had rookies. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons and explanations of why he might have dropped off. But it also one of the reasons could be he dropped off because of his age. Because remember, before Brady kind of changed the rules of the way we think about age in quarterbacks, 38-39, uh, you is normal to see incredible decline in a quarterback's ability even earlier. Remember, 36, 37. So anyway, I, I, I don't know. Getting back to the point, we're supposed to be talking draft, but it's important. It's impossible, um, you know, not to talk about it. Is Stafford available? You're saying Plan C if he's healthy, but is he? I don't think the Rams have cut him, right? Yeah, yes, we're not the only team that needs a quarterback. Exactly. That's why it's so hard to know. You know, there. It's not just that we're not the only team that needs a quarterback. What's up, Sean McAdeer? Um. And Eric Craig, Gary Peters, all you guys. Um, the issue is that we don't. It's a, it's not just like every year where a couple of teams need a quarterback. This is in particular is a year where it feels like there is. Oh, what's up, Wikimedia? There is a crap load of teams looking for a quarterback. There's a lot. Um, did I lose sound? Let me know in the chat if I lost sound. You're saying no sound, so uh-oh. That doesn't make any sense. You're scaring me. Don't tell me no sound. Sound is fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no sound. Now I know how green bean feels. It drives them crazy. Some will say no sound. Oh, my God. Kills them. Um, so it's you, Micro. If you don't, you're not hearing me, it's you, buddy. Uh, all right. So Joe Campione, I would rather pay Brissett $5 million White three million and draft a quarterback third round or later. Um, well, we can't really do that exactly unless we cut Zach, Joe. Because let's think about this. If we pay percent five million and we pay white three million, and we hold on to Zach Wilson and draft a quarterback, that's four. Now we're not keeping four quarterbacks on a 53 man roster. And if you put them on the practice squad, you leave them exposed. Now, I don't think we're allowed to leave Zach Wilson on the practice squad. I, Wikimedia can help me with that. I don't, I don't think we're allowed because we're stuck with his contract. So I don't think we're allowed to put him. I think it's like considered a release. You have to release someone to put them on the practice squad. That's right. So we can't release Zach Wilson because if we did, we'd have this horrendous salary cap hit. Um, so we can't release Zach Wilson. So he has to be on the roster. You just paid Mike White. You're not going to pay him $3 million and then release him. 
to put him on the practice squad. Brissett can't be signed, right, released, and then put on the practice squad. And then if you draft a rookie quarterback and put him on the practice squad, then uh, he's going to get picked up, right? Because he's a third-round quarterback available for anybody for free. Just pick him up off the Jets practice squad. So um, I don't. you can't. You can't carry four quarterbacks. So you're going to have to make a choice. Like maybe you just can't have White. You sign Brissett, Zach Wilson's your number two, and then you draft a third rounder. That's how I think um, it would work. I see someone, uh, Gary Peter says, Daniel Jones. Hey, he's a, he's an option if the Giants can't come to terms with him, but the Giants can franchise him. They could tag him. Um, I don't think they would because I think if they tag him, then he's overpaid. So JT can build a better team around Carr. Keep the picks. Plus, Carr would be coming off with a chip on the shoulder. Yeah, I don't argue that. Like, like, look, that's a big part of me. I ever, you know, I, I, my opinion, I, I agree with you. I'm very, very stubborn about giving up draft capital, especially with this, with this GM. I mean, we have a GM that knows how to make, knows how to run a draft, man. I mean, after last year, you got to think, you got to trust that JD at 13 is going to get us a freaking impact starter. Based on based on what he did last year, so giving that up, like wow. And when people say give up two number ones, that's like two impact starters. Are you going to tell me that Rogers at thirty nine years old, if you look at his numbers last year, and he's going to be how two at the most? Maybe he was a one year guy. You're going to say that that and two first round two quality impact starters let's assume that the, that that's how jd c- continues to pick is better than Derek carr like Derek carr and the two impact starters like a tackle and a safety whatever it is versus just aaron rodgers impact on the team i think the two number one picks overall for the next five years of this team makes up that gap i do I mean, remember, Aaron Rodgers hasn't won four Super Bowls, guys. He won one Super Bowl. And I'm not putting him down. He's great. And I would love it if we had Aaron Rodgers. But we got to be realistic. People are talking about him like he's freaking Brady in his prime. He won one Super Bowl. One. And and it's better than us. We haven't won in 50 years. But it's still, I mean, he's had a long career. So are we going to gamble our whole roster, like gamble our future, everything we built? Here's two number ones. Here's tons of money. We're going to cut all these players for a guy who might come one year, possibly two. And if we don't win the Super Bowl, it all goes to crap. We threw the whole thing away. This whole rebuild took a tremendous hit. Do we want to make that gamble? Whereas Derek Carr, we hold on to our draft capital. We give up cap space. But at least we have our picks. And we can continue to pick impact players. You know, so, I mean, we just got to, you just got to put that in perspective. I mean, it's the same thing like Sean Payton, by the way. Like Denver just signed him for five years. People say, someone came out and said, oh, Denver's going to win three Super Bowls now. Denver's going to win three Super Bowls now. Sean Payton was the head coach of the Saints from 2006 to to 2021 and won. One Super Bowl with Drew Brees as his quarterback. Now, am I putting Sean Payton down and saying he's not a great coach? No. He wins tons of regular season games. He gets his team to the playoffs every year. He's a top coach. He's a great coach. But why are we supposed to believe that suddenly Denver's going to win Super Bowls because they have Sean Payton when they got Russell Wilson as their quarterback who – has to be hope maybe Peyton's gonna rescue his career, but is he gonna be better than freaking Drew Brees? Like, so I, I don't understand why people are automatically anointing Denver Lombardi trophies because of Sean Payton, a guy who's won one Super Bowl with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Years and years. Hall of Fame quarterback, one Super Bowl. Better than anyone we have, fine. Not arguing that, but like we get so carried away by like the fruit we don't have, you know, like the grass is greener. Like we got to be more realistic. It's like, yeah, Sean Payton's a great coach. And if we would have hired him, 
I'm, no one would complain. I get it. Yeah, of course. But but that doesn't mean, oh, we're winning a Super Bowl now. Everybody's saying we get um, far, uh, Aaron Rodgers, we're winning a Super Bowl. No. We're a contender. We're making the playoffs, and we're for real, and I'm excited. But we got to stop thinking, oh, we're going to win a Super Bowl if we get him. The guy has one Super Bowl ring in how many years? He's played for years. So, so we don't know. So that's why I don't know why people are so anti car. Well, you guys don't want any play. Okay? Look, we were playing with the worst quarterback room. Like the quarterback play we got overall last season was as bad as I've ever seen. It was putrid. It was horrendously bad. Horrendously bad. As bad a quarterback play as you can imagine. It was so bad that when Mike White came in, I managed to just move the ball up in the field, you know, against Minnesota and Chicago and actually move the ball. We went nuts like he was a star because we'd never seen it in so long because our quarterback play has been so horrendous. Now, was Mike White horrible before he got hurt? No, he was fine. But was he someone we should have went crazy for? No, he was like doing just enough and he was checking down a lot. And he was like, that wasn't a quarterback that opens up your offense. That's a quarterback that was making us functional when he was healthy. That's how bad we are at quarterback. So for people to be complaining about Derek Carr, look, I don't know if he can win a playoff game. I don't know if he can win a Super Bowl. I don't know about cold weather. I just know that our quarterback play would go up and increase and improve so dramatically. It's beyond belief how much our quarterback quality of play would improve if we went to Derek Carr. And that's why I can't understand how anyone can complain and say, Derek Carr is a world playoff game. Are you out of your mind? In the last 20 years, 30 years, when have we had a quarterback at that level? The guy threw for over 4,000 yards for four years in a row on a team that didn't support him well. They didn't. He didn't have superstar receivers. He had Devontae Adams last year for one year, but he had a horrendously bad coach who put in a system that didn't work for Derek Carr's style of play at all. For the years before that, he was throwing 4,000 yards with who? A tight end, Waller? Who was his wide receivers? And then people want to criticize him for losing. He was losing? Their average defense ranking in the time that he was on the Raiders, was like 27th in the league. How many teams with a 27th ranked defense win playoff games? And he didn't have great receivers. He never did. I mean, it's absolutely people. It's 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 absolute madness. It's absolute madness. If we got Derek Carr, we should be doing jumping jacks. If we got Aaron Rodgers, we should be doing jumping jacks. I mean, almost any quarterback. We had no quarterback. We had a we had a Zach Wilson with the yips, a complete failure, a disaster, worse than Sam Darnold by every measure. Right, and then we had. You see what happens to teams, even great teams, when they stick in their backup quarterback. Poof, it blows up to nothing. That was our quarterback play, backups. A rookie with the uh, – a second-year player with the yips who couldn't throw a five-yard pass, who couldn't throw a football into the ocean off a ship. That was our quarterback situation. So we got to be just realistic. We could have our opinions. We could have our preferences. But as we just need to get someone – we can't. We just got to get someone. We got to get a quarterback in this building. And what's funny is I don't even argue this. I don't. You guys saw my video series. I don't even argue this. Hooker goes to the end of reserve. Okay. Um, checkmate. You win. You solved it. Zach could be in development. Hooker could be on the injured reserve. And we could have three quarterbacks. And we keep them on the injured reserve for the entire year because once you put them on IR, when you make your roster cuts, it is for the entire year. So, Joe, cheers to you. That is a solution. What I'm trying to say, guys, is no matter who we picked up, 
Yeah, yeah, Amari Cooper was no slouch, but it wasn't like he was lo- – but Amari Cooper is also not Justin Jefferson. He's not even Garrett Wilson. I'm sorry. I don't think he is. I think he's a good route runner. He's a really good receiver. But look at his numbers. He's not outstanding. He's really good. He's a true WR1. I'm not saying that. But he's not a top-of-the-league receiver. He's not. And he, and he left, and there was nobody. There was spaces in between where, the, where Renfro was his big guy, right, until they got Devontae. And, yeah, he had a good quarterback, and a good tight end in Waller. But don't forget who helped them. Don't forget who helped them. Derek Carr by being a good passing quarterback. Because Amari Cooper didn't light up in Dallas. He was good. His last year only got 850 receiving yards. And what did he do in Cleveland this year? Look at his stats. He's okay. He's not a superstar. Amari Cooper. Maybe he had a couple of really good seasons. But you know what? Maybe he had that amazing season because of Derek Carr. I don't know. He had like at least one really good season with Dallas and a good season with the Raiders. Obviously, any football team you're on for six, seven years, you're going to be able to talk about some weapons. What I'm saying is it wasn't like it was stacked for Derek Carr, right? It wasn't like he had this team um, like, let's say, Cincinnati, where he had Jamal Chase and Higgins and this one and that one and never won a playoff game or couldn't win a Super Bowl. That's not the It's not the story. The story with Derek Carr is he played on a football team that had one of the worst defenses over that span, 27th average over the course of the years that he was there. Find me a team that wins playoff games and consistently wins with a 27th ranked defense. And if you're going to find me that team, maybe it's like uh, New England when they had a bad defense one year and they were still a Super Bowl team because they had Tom Brady. I'm not saying Derek Carr is Tom Brady. Nobody is. Otherwise, we'd be having to pay him $50 million, right? So, look, I'm not saying Derek Carr is Brady. I'm saying Derek Carr is a very good quarterback. If Eli Manning didn't have the Giants' defense the two years he won the Super Bowl playing the way they played, would Eli Manning have Super Bowl rings? Eli Manning didn't carry that team. Eli Manning was like a guy like Derek Carr. He was not elite, but he was good. He was solid. He was good. And like Derek Carr, he could do it in the clutch. And guess what? That's what someone said. Oh, but Derek Carr, Eli Manning did it in the clutch. Derek Carr is like in the top five all-time fourth quarter comebacks or something like that. So you can't tell me he can't play in the in the clutch. He does. He plays in the clutch. Then somebody says, well, if he had to come from behind so often, why? He wasn't playing well. All right. So then you're going to say that about Tom Brady, right? Who's legendary at making fourth quarter quarter comebacks and of course Derek Carr would have to come back in the fourth quarter a lot he played for hor- with horrible defenses so does that mean Derek Carr's going to come here and we're going to win a Super Bowl I'm not saying that I'm saying that I'm not going to sit there and judge Carr and say he's not capable of winning playoff games because of the sample that we see with the Raiders because I don't see the that he didn't I, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that he wasn't able to win playoff games because he wasn't good enough. Watch tapes, watch games of the Raiders. Watch their defense give up touchdowns and constantly make him come from behind. And sometimes he couldn't, sometimes he couldn't. But get but understand this. We couldn't score a touchdown in the last three games of the year. The Raiders dismantled their offensive line two to three years ago. They traded it away. It was crazy. People didn't know what the hell Gruden was doing. He gave away his offensive line. And they had a horrible offensive line. Horrendously bad. That was part of Derek Carr's tenure. He also had a coach get fired in the middle of the season for racism. He also had a wide receiver kill somebody and get dropped. Tons of adversity for that team. You're not going to credit the quarterback for helping a team hold it together? They made the playoffs in a year that they lost their coach and they lost the player because he was DUI, killed somebody. A first-round draft pick. And they also lost some cornerback who was a first-round draft pick. The adversity of that team. Who do you give the most credit to on the field of all the players of the 53? You got to give it to the quarterback. You got to give him that credit. He's the captain of the offense. He holds the ship together. Everybody knows that. So am I, I'm not declaring Derek Carr an elite quarterback. I'm simply saying that if you look at the quarterback play that we have had in this organization, 
not just the horrendously best past year that we had to stomach somehow the year before that, by the way, that we had to stomach somehow the when, when have we had a quarterback look anything like Carr? I mean, and I, and I'm not, uh, you know, to switch the quarterbacks, I'm not a huge Jimmy G guy. I'm not, but it's the same argument. Except Jimmy G has won playoff games. But the difference is, right, because everybody knows that can watch football. Jimmy G is not better than Derek Carr. Why has he won playoff games? Why has he been to a Super Bowl? Well, he had a defense. He had Debo Samuel. He had an offensive-minded head coach that created a system that other teams are imitating. It's the Shanahan West Coast offense that came from his dad, I guess. But it's, been, but it's multiple times gotten te teams to Super Bowls. Multiple times. So to sit there and say, I mean, so so to sit there and use the argument with Derek Carr, then you're saying Jimmy G is better than him because he's won playoff games? He had a better team around him. That actually matters because football is a team sport, for those of you who don't know. So to me, I to me, do I know that we'd win a Super Bowl if we had Derek Carr? No, I don't know. But at the same time, do I know that Derek Carr can't win a Super Bowl? No, of course I don't know that because I watched close up because there I was in the same city. I watched Eli Manning get two rings. I watched it. I watched it, and Eli Manning was turnover prone. He threw interceptions. Eli Manning was not great every game, game to game. He struggled. He went in slumps. Eli Manning was no better than Derek Carr. So what does it mean? It means if we get Derek Carr, we have to give him, at least if I'm saying he's at the level of Eli Manning, we have to give him what the Giants gave David Carr. What did they, I mean, I'm sorry, Eli Manning. What did the Giants give Eli Manning? Well, they gave him a great running game. They did. Very good running game. Well, Brees Hall gets healthy. We're rebuilding our offensive line. We're gonna. We know we're 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 pretty sure we're gonna draft more guys. We know that JD is doing everything he can. He puts tons of resources into his offensive line. We're not Chicago, who consistently picks players and they're not a offensive linemen, even though they're trying to protect a rookie quarterback or a new quarterback in Justin Fields. So, if we give Derek Carr suddenly for the first time in his career a top five NFL championship level defense that keeps the games close. He's already a great fourth quarter comeback quarterback. He's already a guy that if you look at the Raiders for the last five or six years, are they ever ranking on the bottom of the league in offense? Does anybody say, oh, the Raiders don't score points? We don't score points. We're, you know, so if all of a sudden we, we give him here. Here's Garrett Wilson. That's your Amari Cooper, or whatever you want to say, substitute. I think much better. I think Garrett Wilson's going to prove to be much better. I'm doing the Justin Jefferson comparison. I'm saying Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson caught 83 passes for over 1,000 yards with the worst quarterback play in the NFL. The worst. And somehow, with an offensive coordinator who got fired. Offensive coordinator got fired, banged up horrendous offensive line because it wasn't healthy. Worst quarterback play. This guy gets 83 receptions and over 1,000 yards. You explain that to me as a rookie. I'm telling you, we got a stud. He's a 1,500 yards a yard year receiver. He's right up there with the top elite guys. So that's what you're giving Derek Carr. You're definitely giving him an improved offensive line, and you're giving him a good running game, and you're giving him a top five defense. And I'm saying, how do we know that Derek Carr can't win playoff games? We beat the Buffalo Bills with Zach Wilson as our quarterback throwing for 150 yards and protecting the football. Guess what? Derek Carr can do that if he wanted, but he can do a little bit more than that too. So that's it. That's my take on all that. Anyway, we're supposed to do a draft. Everybody who turned into this that's not a Jet fan that doesn't know me is thinking, what the hell is going on? I thought that we were watching a draft, and we are going to watch a draft, but I had to let my rant out because I, I'm just, you know, and by the way, when I say all this, as much as I was passionately talking about Derek Carr, I will still say, I will still say this. I am not saying that Carr is my number one choice. 
I'm not saying that he's not. I mean, my me and my brother put out a video series where I have Rodgers as my top choice and Carr as my second choice. I am not declaring us a Super Bowl team if we get Carr. I'm not doing it if we get Rodgers. I just want a better quarterback. I want a chance. I want to be in the game. I saw this team when the offensive line was healthy and Brees Hall was healthy. I saw this team beat Buffalo. I saw this team again play very close against Buffalo. And if Joe Flacco, the statue, doesn't come out and fumble the ball, we have a very legitimate chance to steal that game too with Mike White as our quarterback. And if Mike White doesn't get hurt at all that game, maybe we beat Buffalo that game. But we were contending. We were already pushing Buffalo to their limits. Already. Can you imagine? Even if it was Jimmy G, Rogers, Carr, G. Can you imagine? Daniel Jones even. Anything. Anything. If you put anything else into that game behind center. Can you imagine what we could possibly be? Now, the problem with Rodgers, and I talked about it before, or any quarterback we have to trade a lot of draft capital, is then I don't know if we can put that same team around them. Because not only do we have to cut guys to make room on the cap, like Corey Davis, Carl Lawson, not only do we have to cut them, but we don't have the money to replace them. And we already had holes to fill. We need a tackle. We already needed a safety. You know what I mean? So that part is the hard part. That's the difficult part. So, again, congratulations, John Nolte, on being a moderator. You're a moderator because you're a true gentleman, um, a true supporter of the channel, somebody who this channel needs and has needed th since it began. Um, you jumped on right from the beginning. I met you in the chats when back in the day on Jets Talk 24-7 and Green Bean, and you've been here since the beginning, and everybody loves Salty Nolte. You're, uh, you know, and... Uh, Long overdue that you became a moderator. I just forgot to do it. I should have done it. I should have done it way back when the day I learned how to make a moderator. So, you know, um, thanks. For, thanks, bro. Thanks. Thanks for taking the job and being a trusted moderator. <laughs> Talking with Tigo. What's up, buddy? By the way, glad you're here. You want to come in later? Let me know. He always does things on Twitter to let me know, but it's like, I'm not looking at Twitter. I'm running the show. You know, it's like, I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm going to try to bring Tigo in. Uh, do you want, do you want in Tigo? Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. Da, 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 da. Hey, here you go, brother. All right. David Healy, what's going on? Jets would have been better off keeping Sam Darnold's quarterback. Changed my mind. Uh, I don't know keeping him. Uh, well, I guess then they could have traded that pick and gotten a crazy package. Um, I don't. I think we'd be in the same situation. I think that the. I think the one better part of the situation is that we wouldn't be screwed with Zach's contract, and we can totally like Sam Darnold. We could have gotten completely rid of. The next year, for example, if he didn't do well, and then we could have moved on. But Sam Darnold, I think, in with what our team gave Zach, would have been better. But if you look at him in Carolina, you can't really make an argument that he's good. Um, but he has, you know, he's one of those guys. He's he's good sometimes. He really needs everything around him to be right. And I think the injuries to our offensive line, it would have been really hard for him to be much better. Although I think there were parts of last year where, yeah, he would have done really well. I think there were parts of last year where Sam Darnold would have done really well. When we were before all the injuries to, you know, AVT, Brees Hall, I think in that center of the season, Sam Darnold could have been very, very functional. Because when he had Christian McCaffrey, he was 3 0. You know, when you gave him a, when you gave him a, a really good running back, he was good. He was solid. I don't know if he could hold it together. For an entire season. I don't know if he's ever going to be a guy who can carry a team or be an elite or anything like that. But I, I mean, he'd be better than every anyone we have right now, I guess, because Zach is worse and Mike White keeps getting hurt. So I mean, I guess Sam Darnold would 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 have been the best quarterback on the team last year. I'll say that. Could have, would have, should have, right? Because if when we trade when we traded them, 
Joe JD was right. He's not a franchise quarterback. So JD wasn't wrong. The problem was is that Zach was a bust. That's the problem. Right? If Zach would have turned out to be a, an average to good quarterback to great quarterback, then JD was a genius for 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 letting Sam Darnold go. So, you know, there you have it. What can I say? Anyway, let's bring on the man. What a, oh. Well, what the hell happened? What's up, brother? What is going on? How are you today? Ranting. Yeah, I know. Came in. It was great. <laughs> I had to go rewind. I was in the bathroom when I saw you were on. And I was like, oh, cool. Let me see what's going on. And I, but I was like, Jeremy, mid-rant. And I was like, bet it's about something that shouldn't be rantable. But because we're Jets fans, somebody has some ridiculous take. And it's exactly what happened. I bet. <laughs> I'm willing to bet, right? You were, you, were, you, were, you were talking about Derek Carr and how he's a solid quarterback and how he's going to be the next Matthew Stafford in the sense of he's going to go to a team and people are going to realize that he's actually a really good QB, which isn't that hot of a take. He's had excellent seasons. He's just been in Vegas and in Oakland where it didn't matter, right? But somebody came in and said, Derek Carr sucks. He's the worst quarterback in the league. It's not <laughs> worth anything. And it's just like, all right, cool. That's objectively wrong, but cool. No, no not – well, it didn't happen in this chat that somebody did that. You see, I don't need it to happen during this chat because I, I hold on to things. It's spill. It's spillover from Green Bean Show last night. Oh. When there was yeah, somebody okay. in there saying, zero playoff wins, zero – and I was arguing with them all night. So really the rant came from that. Got it. Because I'm like, if I have to hear the – it's to me, it's not – okay, I'm not going to – I don't want to insult the person. It's a lazy take. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's it's what, what it is. It's, it's what the media does. Right, it's the yeah. the, the lull jets the kind of thing. They don't do any of their research. They don't look up the team. It's it's the oh, this team's not going to get more than three wins, and it's just like like what makes you believe that, right? Like even if you didn't believe in Zach, which a lot of people didn't, and I get that, but like how is that roster at the begin at the beginning of the off season where we weren't hurt, where we still had the possibility of Makai Beckton, and we just signed an all pro guard? Like, come on. What's the three wins? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, but anyway, I, I mean, really what I was trying to say anyway, too, uh, the one point I was making was whether you're a Rogers guy or a car guy or even a Jimmy G guy, a Geno Smith, Daniel Jones, whatever story you want to tell, nothing changes the fact that it would dramatically improve our quarterback room compared to last year. A hundred percent. Literally. Yeah. So like no jet Jacoby fan. Jacoby Brissett would be an yeah. upgrade. Yeah. And people are saying Jacoby Brissett, uh, Joe Campiona's, and I'm not even arguing it. Yeah. Because it's not the guy I particularly want over others. But at the same time, Jacoby Brissett is an improvement. It's still a jump forward. And the fact that we beat Buffalo and without having, you know, Mike White getting hurt may have done it a second time. So that means we could have beaten them with Zach Wilson and Mike White. Yeah. With And then you put in Jacoby Brissett this year. Again, not my ideal guy. I'm not trying to make that claim, but there's no reason to say we couldn't beat Buffalo with, in that situation because we did it with two worst quarterbacks, exactly. or we did it with a worst quarterback. No, we did it with four worst quarterbacks. Yeah, guys, like the thing that I think people are failing to understand is we didn't get one quarterback play top 20 quarterback, top 25 quarterback in the NFL, not one. And we trotted out four guys, not one of them could live up to top 25 QB in the NFL levels, which is insane. That's insane to look at the team that we had and to, and to look at how bad the quarterback play was and to say that team got seven wins with how bad Mike LaFleur was at the end. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And this is why I like the car. Look, there's, there's pluses and minuses to every player. Definitely a plus to Carr is that we don't have to give up draft picks because he's definitely going to get cut. Hundred percent. Now the the negatives to Carr, and it's not to me. It's not about player because I think he's a fine quarterback, and a me. And if we got him, it's a miracle that the Raiders were stupid enough to cut him and release him and make him available. And it's a miracle gift that a quarterback of that magnitude, an above average quarterback, over four thousand yards for four years in a row. Top 10 quarterback, four out of the last five years, but based on DVOA rankings. I mean, all of that is a gift to us. Yep. What's the a negative to me is I'm still one of these morons for whatever reason that kind of wanted Zach to have a chance, a chance, even if it was a one in thousand chance to somehow redeem himself. 
and develop yeah. and suddenly become a real quarterback. And if we sign Derek Carr, Zach Wilson, except for you know my, maybe injury, but will never really be the starter again. It's pretty much goodbye. He's a backup because what if we sign Derek Carr, it's three or four years, and by the time that contract ends, Zach is long gone. It'll be a three-year contract. I think. I think no matter what, it's a three-year contract, and then you you put an out after two years on the Derek Carr contract because you need to you need to know with what Zach Wilson is, but also like you you at at some point in time you got to go back to the draft, you know. At at some point in time, you're gonna have to look at your your franchise. You're gonna have to look at your your situation, and you're gonna be like, we can't keep paying because Derek Carr, after he wins a Super Bowl or two with his New York Jets roster, is going to command and want to hit free agency again, and is gonna want forty fifty million dollars because that's what the quarterback market is gonna be. Because after the salary cap explodes, what's going on, Dom? He's gonna want to get paid like a like one of those top tier quarterbacks because he just won a Super Bowl in New York. And there's going to it's going to be a whole different conversation. And the same thing's going to happen with Rodgers, right? There's going to be a whole different conversation which is going to be do you bring back Rodgers? Do you let him retire? Like what do you do there? Do you bring back Derek? What do you do there? Like and I think that the right move is in the next you're looking for a quarterback for 2 years. Possibly 3. Because what you're going to find out is that by the third year, you need to know what Zach is. If Zach can turn it around and develop and become a guy and show you that in practice, you got to do what the Raiders are doing, or not the Raiders. You got to do what Green Bay is doing. You move on from your veteran. You run the guy on his last year. If he fails, you San Francisco it up, and you come, you you skyrocket up the draft, and you go draft your guy, and you run it from there. By that point in time, Keith Carter is probably our offensive coordinator or Clint Kubiak is our offensive coordinator because Nathaniel Hackett is going to be head coaching somewhere because he just won a Super Bowl with the Jets. Like it's, it, And that's how I look at it, which is like I'm not ready to give up on Zach because it's just I, – I don't see how you give up on that much raw physical talent. It's the same thing that I was saying last year about Ashton Davis. Like just give the kid a chance. He doesn't cost you anything. He's on the team. He's not going to go anywhere. He has no market anywhere else. Like you just don't give up on that kind of raw athleticism. What if he figures it out and you're the one who gave up on him a year early? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, it's going to be the worst if he figures it out and he's great. My God, we're going to be the biggest jackasses in the world. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and I loved him coming out of college. I believe deeply in his talent. So yeah, that's why it's so hard for me to let go, you know, as you know, because I believed it so strongly. Um, DVOA is a ranking system. They rank all kinds of things. And one of the things they rank is quarterback. And the reason I like them, Matthew Smith, is because they're one of those ranking systems that looks deeper into just the box score. Like Billing meaning, answers it specifically, what DVOA yeah. literally stands for. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying if you wanted to. I have no idea what it means literally. <laughs> Defense adjusted value over average. Ah, Defense adjusted value over average. <laughs> I just know that my, the way my brother explained it is they look at things like throw down situations and they, they eliminate the bullshit things that have nothing to do with the quarterback's talent. Like, like you don't get credit because you threw a three yard pass on third and 20. Right. But you get a hell of a lot of credit if it's third and 10 and you throw a 12 yard pass in the air for a first down. It's, so they look at situations. The real thing about DVOA is that it takes into consideration who's on the other side of the ball, oh. right? The, yeah, the raw absolutely. stat sheet and rankings doesn't take into consideration who's on the other side of the ball, right? It just, what did your team do? And so, like, if you had the hardest schedule in the, like, if you played Kansas City 17 times, they, they would never take into consideration for your defensive rankings if it wasn't a DVOA stat. The fact that you're facing the NFL's one of the NFL's best offenses where DVOA is going to say, how well did you do? A, how well did your defense do against the number one or number two offense in the NFL in relation to how everybody else did and their average expected thing versus what? So it's just taking into consideration what you do versus what the other team is expected to do. Yep. 
Yeah. No, that's and, and that's a good way to that's a good point too. Like and 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 junkyards at the end of a game, like they consider I I mean, no one knows for sure, by the way. I'm guessing if I even say that, because the reason no one knows for sure is because they're very secretive about their methodology and the way they it has do to it. be. Yeah. It's a right. multi million dollar formula. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But a lot of people respect DVOA a lot, you know. Oh, yeah. The only one thing that you have to remember about DVOA is um, you can't start taking it too seriously two games into a season. Yeah. It needs data, you know. Like, so if you second game of the year, third game of the year, you're screaming, you know, the Chargers have the best defense in the NFL, and the Jets have our top five offense now. It's like, it's been two to three games. Shut up. You know, <laughs> it's like, you can't judge by that. They don't even know the playbook yet. Like, can they <laughs> learn the playbook? Can, can we give them that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you ready to start this draft? You want to do this draft do with me? Let's okay, do it. Let's, let me, uh... I have been doing nothing, but uh, I check Dom's Twitter every six to eight minutes to see if he's posted anything new and then get really sad when he doesn't and then go watch all of the, the senior bowl tape. I have, I have found some newfound loves players that I am going to Max Mitchell all over. And, um, and Yeah. That's what's great about their footage, and that's what makes the draft more fun because um, we are getting all this information from Dom C. And it, you know, and as we do our rankings and stuff of all the different positions, we get to know the players. And yeah, I agree, it makes it a lot more fun. We get to talk like we're intelligent people when we make these decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's 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 start this draft. What I love is that there's a lot of combinations that I like. I'm going to be honest with you, Tigo. I'm not locked into one guy or one situation. Like in a like Take for example, it. for example, if we made this trade, I'd be perfectly happy. Take it. <laughs> well, let's look at the ne- let's like ne- let's look at the next offer. And we got to look at who's available. Okay. I don't care the, who's the available. The other offer, but look at this one. <laughs> So who's going to have the be- the more valuable first round pick? These guys want to take our 185. That's the problem. Whereas these guys just want to give us a 241. But the Chargers pick no, is not as Chargers. valuable. Right, you don't go back as far, too. Yeah, that, yeah. Two pick, that two spots could be very impactful. Yeah. Um, let's look. <laughs> We've seen it before. Jordan Addison, isn't he a slot? Uh, More of a, yeah, slot Z kind of guy. Uh, he's he's a technician when it comes to route running, and that's going to be his thing, right? My big fear is uh, his size. Uh, what, how is he going to do? Like, this is why he he has wide re- high end wide receiver two potential. Like, there isn't a wide receiver one in this draft. There isn't. People got to mm. get that out of their heads. But we have a couple of really high end twos, and Jordan Addison is one of those guys where he's a high end two. The problem with Addison at thirteen is if you take Addison, you're giving up on Elijah Moore. They do the same thing, except Addison has two or three inches on Elijah Moore. So, like, that's the thing. If you take Addison here, you're at that point saying Elijah Moore is now a backup. Right, and it makes no sense to give up on Elijah Moore. Nope. Um, so so here's what hurts us with this draft position, and, I, and that's why I like the trades, right? And I think you feel the same way. There's no value here for us. No, we don't want a running back. We don't want cornerbacks. Not I mean, maybe high. somebody can argue that they like Trenton Simpson. Not at 13, but not at 13. I would take branch here. But like my thing is, is the values not here. You're telling right. me we get to drop back seven spots, right? Because we're going from thir- no eight spots because we're going from 13 to 21. We're going to pick up an extra. I think it's a fifth round pick or a sixth round pick this year where the draft is going to matter because this draft is insanely deep. And next year we go back to having two ones because they're coming up to get there to coming up to get Jordan Addison. Let them have Jordan Addison. And that helps out the Jets in the long run I, either way because you know who doesn't get Jordan Addison at this point? The Patriots. And there yeah. are so many good tackles that are going to be available and other players that are going to be available later in this draft that have skyrocketed up boards um, because of the senior bowl and all this stuff. If this is the call that JD gets from the chargers, he, d- he just said, yep. And then it's, it's that simple. Yeah. So I want to say, I completely agree with you on this. I think that I want, I, and I think we're both on the same exact page. We would take the trade. If the jets took Brian branch in this spot, we would not, not be cursing. Nope. We would not, not be cursing. He's going to be an impact player in the league. Oh, yeah. So if we did pick him, 
we'd be gaining another impact player. And our defense would just, I mean, what was the biggest weakness, man? Missed tackles, no ball hawking. I mean, this guy s- resolves all of that. We got a ball, yeah. he'd be a ball hawker, causes turnovers, doesn't miss tackles, reliable. He's well rounded. He could do anything on the field. He's a guy who stands out and he's like the quarterback of a defense. He's super smart. He is a true free safety in the sense of like your single high, you can trust him in coverage kind of guy. Like yeah. you can truly, truly, if he's, if you tell Brian Branch to patrol your back center, he's going to do that at an exceptionally high level. And I really, really like that. It's just the, va- excuse me, the value. Right. And, and, and I mean, JD's track record of finding some of these guys late, you know what I mean? And that's yeah, where I getting, go. getting that extra first round pick. We know JD now and we know how valuable it is Yeah, because he'll use that. I mean, if he has to, to get us the right guy, he'll take our first round, that first round, package it, <coughs> and get us something ridiculous. Like, Absolutely. get us, like, another sauce. You know what I mean? And the, the realistic thing is, is that while <laughs> unlikely, the teams between 13 and 21, there's not a very many teams that need a safety. There is a, not very likely, but there is a good chance that Branch is there at 21. You I agree. I, I, if, I, to me, the biggest danger to take them before us, but I think it's too early, is the Eagles. Yeah, like yeah. I could see, that I could see, the, I could see the Eagles wanting them, but it's too high to take them. But here's them. the thing: if in this situation, if the Eagles at ten took Tyree Wilson, which is a great pick for them, right? They have to take a cornerback. Their next pick is going to have to be a corner. Yeah, you know. And one, they're going to be picking 31. Yeah, no, 30, we don't, right? I'm, not worried, I'm not worried about their second pick. But what I'm saying is yeah, they yeah. need a corner. And the reason I say they need a corner is because they're going to lose Bradbury. Right. They have Slay, but Bradbury is on a one-year deal. And Bradbury is going to ask for top dollar cornerback money. And they don't have that. <clears throat> not when they just paid A.J. Brown and did all this stuff. That Tyree Wilson pick not being Joey Porter Jr. really surprised me. Because mm. it should be. They need the corner. So let's grab, uh, let's take this trade. Oh, yeah. Let's see what we got left at 20, uh, 21. Oh, the, the Seahawks. <laughs> right. But oh. before before we take, look at this trade offer. It's a move up two spots. Oh, they took them before us, one before us. I don't see, that mean if they took Brian Branch, the Seahawks, that means they've totally given up on Jamal Adams, right? No, 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 because Jamal Adams is a box safety. What? Jamal Adams is a box safety. They play opposite roles. Oh. Okay. Branch is more of a free safety. It's realistic then. The Seahawks are a team that love safeties. They always have. What did? And again, it also depends on what did they do with their other pick, right? Because they don't need corners. They've got, why am I, uh, Tariq Woolen, and then uh, who was his Cincinnati teammate? Uh... For Sauce, who was on the other side of him? Oh, I'm forgetting his name. He's good. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, he's and, good. Uh, they have those two guys, and they were really, really solid. They just take the safety. They should take safety and then D-line. Like, those are, should be their two picks. Oh, yep. How, hey, how disgust Kobe Bryant, that's right. That how disgusting would this be? Oh, I would take if it. We took the, if we made this pick and got another first. I would <laughs> take it. You would I'm telling you this one, too. I would take this one, too. I'm telling you, this first round, like, the only thing that sucks is losing 112. But like, give me three first next year. Because and here's the reason, right? In this in this hypothetical situation, right? Like, let's say you have Rogers at this point, right? And it only costs a second. They're gonna get Rogers, or for whatever reason, three firsts. If Rogers retires, three firsts puts you at the number one spot, and gets you whatever gets you Caleb Williams. You know? Yeah. That's that's my thought process. I think like. It's a little unrealistic, right? But like, it's a, it's there's the, that there's the conversation. But you could honestly, you can stick and pick. You've got two first round picks next year. So look at this, though. Look who's available that we'd be turning away. Yeah, he won't be here in real life, but yeah, <laughs> that's why you would take him, right? Like you would take him at thirteen. This is why I don't like the PFN mock drafts simulator right. because their their rankings are so weird. So bad. So bad. Yeah. Like, they're so bad. Like, what are they smoking? Yep. 
Now, I mean, but see, the thing I like is we can get like a crazy good offensive tackle bait if we want to play this draft the way it's ranked. That's why, like, <laughs> so, you like so, I would the way it's ranked, Atlanta. you have to take the trade. Yeah, the way like, this, I would take, take the it. Atlanta one, but Peter Skaronsky is there at 21. Go, you take Peter Skaronsky every day of the week in real life, you mean? Oh, yeah, you would take him at 13. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I like even with the Chargers pick, I'd take him at 13. But it's just like he's not gonna be there. Like he's going to be a Las Vegas Raider, and that hurts my heart. So yeah. There we go. So let's see who's still on the board when we get to pick. We uh, we could still get a good tackle. That's why I'm willing oh, we to will. do this. Oh, look we at that. We got two back. picks in a row. Nah. Two picks in a row. I don't think we're taking this pick. No um, so let's look at which tackles are left. Gervin Dexter's still up there, just so you know. John Michael Schmitz is still up there. You would take him. You take him, and then you would take. Uh, um, ah, there you go. There you two guys. Juan Jones is there. Like, here's the thing: you don't even have to take John John Michael Schmitz because you could wait uh, until the third round and take Mock. Cody Mock has become my this year's. Uh, my this year's Max Mitchell. He is my new favorite player because at the Senior Bowl, he has not only taken snaps at tackle and guard, he has also taken snaps at center. He has played all five positions and he has looked really, really good as a developmental prospect who can play all five positions on the offensive line. The value of Cody Mock is insane. And then Darnell Wright and Dewan Jones are men amongst boys at the Senior Bowl. They are doing incredibly good things incredibly good things. Dewan Jones has possibly, in my opinion, played himself into the possibility of being the bottom end of the first round. Like really, like if a team says, screw it, we're going to draft for need instead of best player available. And they desperately need a tackle. They might look at Darnell Wright and Dewan Jones in the bottom there. Yeah. I look Dewan Jones to me is the pick here without question. I like mock. The problem is, is he's 66. So when we pick next, it's like 77 and it's too early to take him in the forties. In my opinion, if Dewan Jones is there, I would so, take for me, it's Darnell Wright over Dewan Jones. Really? And the only reason is because Darnell Wright is it's, it's a, it's a Mekhi Becton fear with Dewan Jones, That's true. which is he's six, he's eight, six, eight, three seventy. Yeah. And even though he has a massively long arms and I love this kid, I do have a I we haven't heard anything about his weight or anything like that, but Makai Becton, as much as I love him, is still scary. It's a scary situation. I don't know. I mean, I think Dom C really likes Darnell White too. He's he's great. He's been doing excellent things. Excellent things. At, at, at the senior bowl playing incredibly well playing both on the left side and on the right side um and he's making some of these guys that were like projected to be high uh high second round picks maybe bottom of the first round picks look like children there's a rep of his against i think it's andre carter i think they're both on the same team i might be wrong there there it's, there's a rep of his against one of these it's either andre carter or isaiah Foskey? I don't remember which one, but one of these guys that are supposed to be like round two edges that are supposed to be pretty good. And he absolutely dominated them, dominated them. <laughs> okay. So we See? take Darn, we take Darnell, right. And, and then, then we look and we have, and we have John Michael Schmidt sitting right there. If we want him. Oh yeah. You wouldn't do back to back. So then we get, then we get, then the offensive line is done. And Dom C is saying, right. Was arguably the best player all week. Yep. Like so said, imagine that that scenario, right? I mean, we just not only did we add the draft capital. No, Jack Campbell. <laughs> I love him, and he's gone. We was he's not oh, the pick, but one. he's gone. Oh, so Steve not Avila's gone. Not only. Well, we we already invested in offensive line. We're not going that way anyway. I was just. But not. I mean, look what we did. Aside from the draft capital, we just we just stacked our offensive line. Stacked. Stack. And have I mean, another first Max round Mitchell pick next and year. Beckton coming back. Hmm? And there's another first next year. We got two of the top guys, in my opinion. We got the best center in the class, an excellent tackle that can come in and play immediately. And we have an extra first round pick that's going to be in the mid 20s. Not Dude. mid 20s, but like 18 to 20, 22. Dude, extra first round pick. We got two extra first round picks. Did you forget? Did we take the, we took the Falcons. We had three firsts. <laughs> Caleb we three first. Come. We're geniuses, bro. Oh, oh it's easy. We're breezy. geniuses. I'm telling you, we'd be geniuses. This would be a dream. This would be. This would be. This would. 
this could arguably match last year. Think about it. Oh yeah. We bring it, we meet these needs. We bring in a stud center and a stud tackle so at, that, that right away start and give us an offensive line. And we look for and knowing in our back of our minds that we have three first round picks next year. Are you kidding me? That's historic. It's epic. Oh yeah. So, um, so this is what Cody Mock is still there, by the way, but he can't yep. play center, can he? I mean, yeah, he, he can play guard. He yep. can play guard. He's played all five positions at the Senior Bowl at a at, at a pretty good level. I think I think this would be way too offensive line heavy. We don't need a center, right? Because Michael Schmitz, I think, has also taken snaps at guard at the Senior Bowl, and he's looked good, pretty good doing it. So it's one of those things of like, you got your tackle, you got your center. I think you're done on the offensive side of the ball. Um, like at this point, the only time you relook at it is late. If you're trying to pick up like a wide receiver, because I don't think we need a tight end. I don't think we need a running back. I don't need, we, I don't think we need anything else on the offensive line. Like we're good on the offensive side of the ball at this point in time, you're really looking at stacking up the defense. And so like, who's the best defensive tackle available kind of a thing. Who's the best safety available well, is like got, Jamie Robinson still on the board. Well, we got Jair Brown. I actually like, but let's look at the safeties. J.R. Brown, I think Dom C. likes him. Um, Jamie is there because he's 126. That's, that's, see, see I think Jamie Robinson, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Dom, but I think when you look at total safety prospect, not free safety or strong safety, like pigeonholed one of these two guys, while he's not elite at either the free safety or the strong safety role, he's real good at both, in my opinion. Hmm. I mean, we can let me. I don't, we might not have the pick to get Jammy later, so let's look. Dom, no. is that true? Because I saw I saw reps, not like not from you, but from other people of him taking snaps at center. I'm just asking. You were there, so you can tell me. But I. Or were my eyes mistaken in what I saw on some of these highlight videos? Okay, so the best – so we got this list of safeties. Mm. If we look at linebacker, I do not like Ivan Pace. I'm not a fan of Ivan Pace. I know Rusty Spooner loves Mahamud Diabiti. <laughs> I'm not getting super excited for, by any of these linebackers except maybe Dorian Williams a little bit. Jalen Graham, maybe. Hmm. Maybe Jalen Graham. Yeah. I like I like Servasier Dennis. He he impressed me with some of his reps at the Senior Bowl. A lot of like, like he got like. This is still an overdraft for him at this position, but I did like I I, I enjoyed what he's what he was able to do. Okay, now let's look at the, the best defensive tackles because I want to go for value here. Uh, you got Brian, Byron Young from Alabama. Always feels like a solid pick when you take one of these Alabama guys. And I don't know much about Cansey from Pittsburgh. So the real thing is, is where's the overall value? Right, because we're looking at the three positions. We could take a linebacker, we could take a safety, or we could take a defensive tackle, and all three would be good for our team. Oh yeah. So I think um, Toto is long gone. Like the line, I, I'm disappointed. I thought one of the linebackers would slip. Nobody slipped that I was really excited about. Like none of the guys I really really liked slipped. But I think there's. I think Dorian Williams. Somehow I remember his name. I think Dom C really likes him. I think he's really fast, good cover guy. And also Jalen Graham sounds very familiar to me. I don't remember Jalen Graham. Hmm. Um, which Byron Young, the Tennessee one or the Alabama one? Because I like one and I don't like the other. Uh, the Purdue one, if you talk about Jalen Graham. No, 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 no. The chat was saying Byron Young is a good pick here. And I oh, said, which one? Because there's two of them. He's Alabama. Well, no, there's also a Tennessee Byron Young. But the one that's here is Alabama. Oh, for like, again, Michael not, I don't like the Alabama one. Personally here, if we're taking a DT, it's Mazzy Smith or Keanu Benton. 
I like both of those guys over By- Byron Young. Um, if we're being honest, um, what's the edges look like here? Oh, we'd have to take this guy. He... We have to take him. We have to take him. Mm. We have to take him. Adult I mean, this guy's a freaking animal. Look, you're not wrong. He's you're an not animal. Wrong. We have to take him. He's going to be a guy who gets double digit sacks. I'm telling you, he's a beast. I don't hate it. Where are we <laughs> picking right now? I don't care if we need him or not. This guy is an absolute animal. He is. We need making... we need defensive depth. He's got to take someone's got to take up the Michael Clemens role, right? Because Michael Clemens is going to take the Bryce Huff role because Bryce Huff is going to take the JJ role because JJ is going to take the Carl Lawson role. So somebody has to take the Michael Clemens role. And uh, Adeba, Adeba Wore, Jesus Christ, what a last name, um, really had a really good senior bowl. Like a really good senior bowl. Yeah, he's out of control, this guy, man. I, I They sent me footage of this kid. And he is a Jim Pock saying we don't need an edge. But when you have an opportunity to get a uh, – I mean, this guy's not going to be available. This guy's going to move up way in the draft. You oh, see yeah. what he's doing in, in these freaking – I mean, if you saw the footage of this guy, Jim Pock, you wouldn't be saying we don't need an edge. You Techn- never you never not need a guy like this. You always Jim need Pac, a guy at, like at, this. at this point in time, we don't need anything. We've addressed our two biggest needs, which was offensive center and offensive tackle. Everything after this point is luxury depth picks. Now, whether you like our safeties and you want an upgrade at safety or you like our linebackers and you want an upgrade at linebacker, those are different things. And I don't think the new I don't think the Jets front office agrees with you. That's the thing. People keep talking about the Jets drafting a linebacker. I feel it in my bones. We're not going to take a linebacker this draft. I know. He doesn't I do, care. I don't think we're going to take like one. what they have. They like what they have. And and to be fair, so do I. <laughs> like like if you can bring back CJ on a much 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 cheaper deal, I liked what CJ did. And if you're telling me that Jamie and Sherwood can get more reps, we can possibly bring back Quincy. Like we can go out and get a a big name linebacker because we're gonna have some money available. Like those are those all seem to be better options than taking a wide receiver. Oh, I'm sorry, a linebacker in the draft. Yeah, I say JD. People said we didn't need a cornerback, but he took Sauce Gardner. I say he takes this kid Abbebawar because not because monster, we, not because we take him because he's an absolute monster. And for those of you saying we don't need him, the Michael second Clemens. he's getting sacks, you're not going to sit there and say why we pick him. Like the second he's dominating an offensive line, and he barrels powers through and throws an offensive lineman out of his way like a rag doll and sacks the quarterback, you're not going to be – or he throws an offensive lineman out of the way and tackles a running back four yards behind the line of scrimmage. You're not going to be sitting there complaining, but we didn't need an edge. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this defense is predicated on it. we got to keep the pipeline going. Yeah, like This defense only works if we're getting tons of pressure and we have to be loaded and stacked at edge. We didn't. We didn't need Michael Clemens after taking JJ. He's he became an instant fan favorite before he even took a snap. This is yeah. a great pick. Yeah. So here, this is a weird part of the draft because we're at one forty-five. I think it's also another value part of the draft. This is where you go for just the best value. Like who's here that excites you? You know. Look at the, look at the DTs. Okay. It's back to safety here. I mean, back to it's DT or safety here. Colby Wood Coburn is still here. What's our next pick? Uh, not till 200 something. We got that. Oh, no, 185. Oh, we got 185. Yeah. Uh, but mm, mm, okay. Okay. I'm on board with Coburn here. What's safety looking like? Oh, you like Coburn, huh? I like Coburn. Uh, safety. Actually, I like Jay Ward a little bit, but not crazy in love with him. Mm, nothing crazy good. Know. And then, I guess, linebacker, take one last look. Dion Henley is an interesting guy because he has all of the after, after, uh, 
Dom mentioned him. I went and watched him, and he's absolutely right. He's got all of the, um, like, he's got all of those, like, the tools to make it work, but just hasn't played linebacker long. Oh. See, I love guys like that because of the upside, you know? Mm-hmm. If it's a Dom guy, let's grab him. What's we the, don't have many. I more. know people are going to be like, but what's corner look like? Because if you can cut Justin Hardy and save $3.5 million because you get a stud at corner, like that's worth it. Dom C says Henley played himself into a second, third round pick. So we got to grab him. Really? <laughs> Just to make it look good. See, I'm telling you. Like, it, I'm Henley telling was you. was one of those guys. He's, he's raw athleticism. And he just hasn't played the linebacker position long. I'm it's telling you, Ad, go ahead. Adbor, Adbor will end up being the best player. If he doesn't get drafted in the first round, he's going to be the best player maybe in the draft that's not drafted in the first round. I'm telling you, I what, what I saw on that tape, this guy is a monster. Like a monster. Like I've never seen anything like it. I'm terrified of going against this kid. <laughs> he's, the ni- he's the new Nigerian nightmare. That it, it, his, his his name is going to be awesome to just like I like guess one of those things. It's D line depth. It's it's all about depth at this point. Like like people are are going to get oh we need this we need that like like we don't. Period. Like we just don't. We're good. We have money. We can go do things. Like you just take whoever's the best player that's out there. Like you know that's a real situation. Yeah. Well, if you look at the board now, they're saying the best player left on the board at one eighty five. Is Akeem Mesidar, defensive tackle, Miami. I don't know much of him. I don't. I don't. I don't know much of him. What's um, wide receiver look like here? I mean, to be honest, though, this is the part of the draft where you'll see some safety you never heard of get picked, knowing JD. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's Safety but, out of some small school out of nowhere, and he's just going to be the next guy. Jaden Man, I'm Lee. telling you. Two guys that I have zeroed in on at wide receiver are Puka Nakua. I knew you were going to say Puka. And Andre Iosivas. For me, if we're picking in the fifth or the sixth round and we've got it and we don't have, like we've we don't have any super massive needs, you take a flyer on one of these two guys because Andre like Iosivas or no 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 it's Yoshivas is going to break. The 40 yard dash record. Like he's going to do it. He's a track star, 6'2. It's 6'2. It's six. He's 6'2, 207, runs a 426 40. He's going to break the, the 40 record. He is going to be a special teams nightmare. And if you can develop him and get him unenrolled from the Denzel Mims school of body catching as soon as possible, and you get him with a good wide receivers coach. He has some of those. It's the Denzel Mims thing where it's just like he's got those unteachable traits. You can't teach 425 speed. You can't teach 6263. You can't teach that. And so if he can get the burst to get to his top speed as quickly as possible, he is he has three you 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 literally give him a playbook with three routes and he'll beat the corner every single time if he's one on one. He's I, think I, I'm I take, love let's throw a dart. Let's throw a dart. I love you. Like he's he's my he's really starting to become my Max Mitchell of like I'm like this is this is a guy that I think is gonna work. Nathaniel Dell, all, Nathaniel Dell being available here is ridiculous. He played himself into day two, I think personally. Really, I think he played himself into day he's two. A tiny little guy. Oh yeah, but he was <laughs> he was one of the best wide receivers from what I keep reading everywhere at this at the Senior Bowl, like hands down one of the best wide receivers there. Hmm. I want Dom to confirm and or deny that because I wasn't there. He was. So what I'm, what I'm feeling right now is that we, I want to look at punters. (laughs) There's Mike Turk, man, Mike Turk. I think we need a punter. I think we need a punter. If we make a trade that gives us a, a pick like 241. I think that's the highest value pick for the New York Jets. We need to bring a punter into camp, and I don't want to get just some guy. Like, let's get Michael Turk. Let's get a, let's get the best punter out coming out of college this year. You know Here's what I the mean? thing if you take Turk, right? And I'm not anti-Turk, right? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing if you take Turk. You're not taking Turk to compete out of camp. 
You're taking Turk to be the guy. That's the thing. You have to have confidence in a guy when you draft a punter like this. Because you know what what could be the sixth round pick, theoretically? What? We got Michael Clemens around this spot. Oh, sixth round pick could be um, Pinnock. Could be a Pinnock. Michael Michael Carter. Yep. See what I'm saying? Second. Is is the possibility of a Michael Carter the second, a Jason Pinnock, a insert other player here, a a, a guy that we all love that we lost to, to, to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm stalling because I can't. Jonathan Marshall. Mm-hmm. You know, these are all sixth round picks. No, I think Michael Carter was a second round pick. I'm, I'm sorry, a fifth round pick. Um, doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, while I uh, totally agree, he is totally like punter is totally a massive need. Like there are lots of punters. We can find a punter. You can bring in like nine punters to compete and take the best one. They're out there. So that's, true. that's my thing. Like you have to look at the board and see if anybody like this is the last pick. So screw best player. Like who's the, who's the guy that stands out for you. That's available out here. Cause at this point we're just throwing darts to the dartboard, right? Yeah. But who's the guy that you feel confident is the dart. And this is where like, I trust uh, what's his name. Uh, Joe Douglas so much in this area. And this is why I traded. Like I was so on board with trading back twice. You're telling me we're giving Joe Douglas another shot at, at the dartboard in the fifth or the sixth round where he's been a stud? Sign me up. Nathaniel Del Comp is a quicker Kadarius Tony. No lie confirmed. <laughs> See, I know what I'm talking about. A lot of that was because of the text messages that I've shared with Dom. But forget you heard that part, guys. That's all in my brain. How about to his little brother? No. <laughs> So, I mean, who do you take a shot with? I mean, uh, if I go to all, the, there's no quarterbacks left, unless you no. want a guy from Fordham. Um, Fordham. <laughs> love that. Watch, he's going to be a star because I'm making fun of him. Of it happens course. every time. It happens every time. When I, me and my brother used to go to basketball games, and anytime we'd make fun of someone, it, they would cut, it would get thrown in our face. Like there was a guy, we were at a, uh, a Warriors game. This was years ago. This is a guy, Andrew DeClerc. And he came in, he was like the 13th guy. He came in because they were getting killed. And we're making fun of him. Like, and he gets a rebound, and, and my brother goes to clerk. And I'm like, and then he gets another rebound and another rebound. And they start to come back, and he starts scoring. And we're like, to clerk, to clerk. And we're like, and then he ended up being one time, one day we're watching the playoffs, and I forget the team if it's Atlanta. Suddenly, playoff game, this is like three or four years later. They're starting small forward, Andrew DeClerc. <laughs> you love oh, it. What the hell? Love okay. it. Um, this is the thing where I'm not super familiar this late in the draft. I'm gonna, throw a dart at, I'm gonna throw a dart at Carrie Brooks and bring in a tackle. There we go. Let's go get him. Carl up the middle. Dom C right now just pulled hair out of his head. No, that guy sucks. That's the guy that got thrown around like a rag doll. <laughs> That guy has two left knees. <laughs> so let's look at uh, let's look at how we did. We got Darnell right at tackle. I think Love you it. could plug yeah. him and play him if you have to. Just instantly. John Michael Schmitz would be our starting center. The so reason the we would take years. him, the reason we would take him is be, means we didn't. We, you know, McGovern's gone. Yep. And we need a starting center. Yep. Um, and then the controversial pick that I'm making is. When I see – look, if I'm JD, like I'm not the GM, but if I see a guy that I'm in love with in a position like edge, it's very rare that I like an edge that's not one of the prime guys, like the top three, you know, top ten pick, but, you know, like that you think is a first-round talent. Domsey sent me some footage. You know, you got the same footage. You saw the, the tape. I, I can't pass up a guy like that at 74. I just can't. Can't do it. And then um, Dwayne Henley, the wide receiver from Princeton. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the linebacker from Washington State. Andre Losov. And, and, and look, whoever these are, whatever guys in the back these are from J.D., J.D. seems to do well with them. He seems uh, to do well. He doesn't, oh, yeah. pick, he doesn't pick junk. Nope. Um, and then you look and you He picked Max look, Mitchell? For those of you who are complaining – 
Well, 13 became 43, Jim Pock, because look what we have next year. Well, actually, 13 <laughs> became 21, which then became 44. We right. traded 13 to the Chargers for their first round next uh, this year and next year, and then pick like 185, I think it was. Right? They gave yeah. us a pick this year in the late. And then Atlanta yeah. came up and said, hey, we'll give you 44, but we'll give you next year's one and our third next year. So then we said, screw it. There it is. They wanted Kelly Ringo. That's a bust. They wanted Kelly Ringo. That's who they wanted. I'm not a, I'm not a Ringo guy. Look here. What's about what about this one? Ooh, they came up for, for, for two guys I actually really like. Yeah. They took the two guys. They made good use of it. But anyway, uh, look at the draft capital. So I think I think we address the offensive line without question. Oh, yeah. You put these two guys on the offensive line, Becton comes back or Max Mitchell comes back. I mean, AVT's coming back. It's over. We have an offensive line, right? We took a shot at edge. I, I think it's an exciting shot. Um, JD might take someone else. And then we get some, then we we take we throw some darts back here. But look what would happen for us next year. Next year, we, we would come Williams. back and we would have three first round picks next year. Three first round picks and two third round picks. Um, I ain't complaining about that. You know, I ain't, I ain't complaining about that. I say we address, address the offensive line, got better, added some other guys that might be special and make the defense better. Um, and s started the pipeline again. I really believe in that. The same way we built the team that we have right now with all that core talent, how do you – you got to keep doing that. Don't let that die because if we were if we were to do that, we would – um if we were to do that, then no matter what happens, if we miss our shot, like if Rodgers or Carr, whoever it is, if they're not working out, we are loaded for next year, and then we have another draft where we just have so many options to bring in so much crazy talent. Either we bring in three new number one picks, or we combine two of them. Like you said, maybe even combine all three, move up, and maybe get our future quarterback. I hate doing that because to invest three top, you know, three potential studs on the roster for a total roll of the dice. And what I've learned is no matter what quarterback you draft in a draft, it's rolling the dice. Oh yeah. There's no sure things. No, It's not even rolling the dice. It's a flipping of a coin. It's just, yeah. you're taking a 50, 50 shot. Like it, like it, there's so many outside things that go at it to make it. And like, here's the thing, right? Like the jets are a team, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, like, we don't have very many holes. We don't outside of quarterback. We don't have something that's like so much, so big, desperately a need that we literally don't have a body or someone there that can play the position. No, we have someone that can play the position at a relatively high level at every position on the football field. The thing that changes is your belief in that player or not. That's the difference, but we've got, we've got a lot of good guys on this team. It yeah. gives us the flexibility to do something crazy like that and trade out of the first round entirely, get three first round picks next year, and boom. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Tell me more about Tanner McKee. 6'6 six, six out of Stanford. Uh got a big arm. He's got um he's got all of the the raw skill sets. The problem with Tanner Mackey is that um he's a statue. He, he doesn't give you any mobility or any kind of movement in the pocket. Uh, also, like ob obviously, he's like out of Stanford, so it's not a great program. And so you worry about his his transition to the next level because the next level at like top NFL quarterbacks are starting to look like you know guys who have that that mobility aspect, that ability to roll out, that ability to to extend beyond the play and make up for the deficiencies on your offensive line, because it seems like everybody's offensive line is bad because the defensive lines are just getting ridiculous in the NFL. And so when you have a guy, like you see, like your Patrick Mahomes, your, 
Jalen Hurts, who isn't even an elite quarterback, your 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 Josh Allen's, your Joe Burrows, those guys that can extend the play. Hell, even Zach Wilson did it for us for a long time. How many more sacks would Z- uh, would Mike White have gotten or Joe Flacco have gotten because Zach's ability to roll out? He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that ability to to you know move. Uh, re- like move outside of the pocket. Now, one thing that he does really, really well to make up for it is he has great awareness of the pocket. He knows when to step in, when to step to the side, when to shimmy, when to do those things. He's an interesting guy because some people either love him or some people I like, like hate him and there's no middle ground. And I tend to be on one of the guys that likes him, but he just not a fit for what we're doing. Like our timeline, you know? Because yeah. we have Zach. Like, let's say we already had Rodgers or we already had Carr and we're trying to find their replacement for three or four years down the road. This is where you can look at a Tanner Mackey as a great option for that because he's got all those things and it's never going to hurt to sit behind a quarterback, like like a, a very good quarterback to learn. Right. No, I think I think um, if, if it look, they, they know what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, it depends on how Zach looks and, you know, they have to, they just have to figure it out. I mean, they just have to figure it out. I mean, I'm okay if they go in with him as our number two quarterback. Like if it's like, if we sign a veteran and Zach is the number two, I'm, I I mean, I'm okay with it because you're never excited about uh, most teams. You're not excited about the backup quarterback coming in anyway. It's never a good thing. And you know what I mean? And with Zach, at least there's that potential that maybe it's going to be the Zach that played the, you know, the end of the first year against Tampa. Maybe it'll be the Zach that was efficient and beat Buffalo. Maybe it'll be the Zach that beat Tennessee last year as rookie year. Like, maybe we'll get that exciting play. Yeah, maybe we know? get fourth quarter Zach against Pittsburgh. Yeah, maybe we get that Zach. Maybe we get somebody who comes in more hungry, more humbled, more, you know, uh, time to have worked on his fundamentals, watching a veteran guy before they get hurt. Let's say they do in the middle of the season, but he had time to watch. And then he comes in and he's able to, you know, and suddenly he's playing to the, you know, in like at the level that he played when he was at his best. And there were games when he, when he was good. I'm not saying it was that he, he was never elite, but there were games where Zach Wilson was good and showed lots of promise and had flashes. And if he's the number two quarterback and gives us that potential that he might come in and actually be something, then fine. Yeah. I think you run Zach as the two all of next year, no matter what. Right. Mm-hmm. I think you have to because you have to you have to go under the assumption that God forbid it's not gonna happen, but God forbid the starter does get hurt. You you have to have the hope that an entire off season and let's say eight weeks before a starter gets hurt, just because right. whatever, right? Or you're it's not gonna get hurt, but let's say whatever, random. right? However long amount of time that is with Nathaniel Hackett, who's been able to get bad quarterbacks to look decent right and is actually going to adjust his scheme for his quarterback and adjust his play calling for his quarterback you hope that and guys i don't mean that zach wilson is going to be as good as this player but what i'm saying is is you can still hope that he he tom brady's the the situation in the sense of let's gets knocked out brady comes in suppose it to be the backup Right, he's just supposed to play until Bledsoe gets back, and he never gave the job back. Like it's not a bad situation if you go and get a Derek Carr or an Aaron Rodgers, and then for some reason they get hurt, and Zach steps up and doesn't lose the job, and he wins it straight up, and he's the guy now, like that we all thought he was going to be at two. It's not a bad thing, and if he sucks, then like he's the backup. What did you expect out of a backup? To play high level football, like it rarely happens. Right. So, it's like a can't lose situation at that point because we already lost with Zach. So at this point, if he ends up coming back in, like because somebody gets hurt, it's a can't lose situation. It's either he, he's he's horrible and we say, well, we knew he was horrible, or he's great and we say, holy cow, it's a miracle. You know, it's like Nathaniel oh, Hackett did it. <laughs> he did it. He saved Zach Wilson, you know? Uh, all right. Well, I got to cook dinner with my wife. I got to go get ready for my live stream. We got one of those dinner boxes that you order. You know, they send me a box of three dinners and they give you recipes and stuff. Oh, we use me and my wife did that uh, a while ago. It was a really, really cool because it's just like 
you get to cook new and exciting meals that you never done like before and you get to do it together. And then you, I don't know if whichever one you're doing, but the one that we did, they like gave you a card with all the ingredients so that if you ever wanted to do that meal again, you can just go buy out the ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. That, it. It's so a Martha really Stewart, cool. Martha Stewart one. No, no, no. We did, uh, I think it's go fresh. One of those things. Oh, we did go fresh a while back and then we stopped. That was when we were in New York. We didn't have time to do the cooking, but, uh, now we're revisiting because my mom, my wife is home, um, you know, working from home. So we're like reconsidering it. But yeah, they give us the big card, so it has all the. the it's like you get the recipe, you know. Yeah, it's really cool. We still have ours, like all the recipes and stuff, and we'll like ever. It's harder now with the baby, obviously, and because like my wife's like in the first trimester, so like she doesn't know what she can and can't eat, and so Ooh. it's just like uh we're just gonna stick to what we know we can eat so our diet consists of like four different things that we just do on repeat wow. but yeah talking jets with T tigo everybody if you're not subscribed to his channel what the hell's wrong with you <laughs> talking jets with tigo he's everywhere now you can find him on green yeah. beans channel you can find him on my channel you can find him on buffalo's channel the guy is everywhere but guess what he has his own channel too so yep Give for those of you who want to keep the party going, I will be going live in 14 minutes. I'm going to go get ready for that. We're going to be talking Derek Carr, nothing but Derek Carr, everything regarding Derek Carr, because there's a lot of news that came out in the Senior Bowl, and maybe we'll talk some Senior Bowl, and maybe we'll do a mock draft. Who knows? We'll see where the night takes us, but that'll be in 15 minutes. Fantastic. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you Sunday night with Dom C. So excited. Don't not be tipped up. And here it comes, it's about to come in. Oh my God, they didn't. They took Sauce Gardner. Oh my God, they don't want an edge. Maybe he likes Jermaine Johnson at 10, then we're not gonna get a wide receiver. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver. Oh my God, no edge. Who is sitting there? The, the Jets traded up. The Jets traded up. Are we taking JJ? Are we taking JJ? Because I know Braden is in New Zealand saying, we should get Lily, Mike. He's definitely saying that. JJ! We got Johnson! We got Johnson at 26! We got Johnson at 26! This is great! <laughs> yes! They took Roger McCreary. They didn't take Dean. We traded up. We can get the Kobe Dean. We can get the Kobe Dean. It really is. They took Brees Hall. They took Brees Hall. Wow, I mean, look, I love Brees Hall. I... But there's also Jeremy Ruckert, who I think is the best tight end in the class, personally. They took Jeremy Rucker. They took Jeremy Rucker. Yes! We got a Jeremy. We got a Jeremy. Oh, and the Jets pick, and it's Max Mitchell. Offensive tackle. We needed that. That's... Uh, wow. We took Michael Clemens. I never heard of him. A defensive edge.